What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video and Jurgen Klopp came out with some very interesting comments before the Liverpool Arsenal game saying that Liverpool won't enter the transfer market for defensive reinforcements unless a serious injury happens to one of our centre-backs so first of all let me know what do you think about this in the comments below do you think Liverpool are good defensively in terms of do you, do you think we have enough players to cope with the whole season especially because this season is a lot more congested a lot less time for to complete the same amount of fixtures as last season and Liverpool have only three senior centre-backs Gomez, Matip and Van Dijk it looks like John Gomez might be fit for the Arsenal game but Fabinho could play as a defensive uh, as a centre-back but he looked a little bit shaky in the second half uh, against Lincoln City but that that was without Van Dijk and the guys if you enjoy these types of videos leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already half of you guys aren't subscribed to my channel so, so make sure you do so you never miss the latest Liverpool transfer news videos and we will take a look at what Liverpool will do with terms of uh, selling players in the past um, in the next uh, week or so because Jurgen Klopp said it makes no sense for Liverpool to keep the same big squad for the whole season we need to sell some players so we will take a look at that uh, later the problem I have is that both Joe Gomez and Matip are very injury prone it's very hard that they don't get injured at least two or three times in a season so do you do we really want to rely on Fabinho to play many games in the Premier League to partner Van Dijk or maybe even Henderson but let first let's listen to what Jurgen Klopp had to say I don't expect a lot to be honest I think you are well covered we have three absolutely top 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 center halves young players in line Fabinho in the backhand if you want and then all of a sudden three players are out for a few days and that is not nice but you cannot solve that in the transfer market that is just not possible we will not even try if nothing more serious happens I hope we don't have to try that if the situation stays like it is at the moment then there no there then no there will be uh, nothing new no new centre-back signing is expected by Liverpool even though I think that we could do with um, a defensive signing I mean if Jurgen Klopp thinks that we are fine as it is it's okay but what if Van Dijk gets a long injury then I think our backline gets weakened considerably especially because do you have to like expect Gomez and Matip to stay fit I don't think they will for the whole season I mean they started the season uh, basically Matip started it injured and Gomez got injured very early and Jurgen Klopp also said all the rest we are in quite a good place uh, in terms of the whole squad and what the outcome on, on ongoings outgoings will be I have no idea at the moment we will see and Jurgen Klopp was asked about the adaptation process. How will the new signing Simicas, Thiago, Diogo Jota adapt to Liverpool's new playing style? Uh, it's new to them, I mean. You cannot train a lot of intense stuff in between the games, but you can work on tactics. That is possible, not for very long, but working on tactics is possible. On the other side of our football, because I am a pretty simple person, is pretty simple it is not rocket science and it is not that complicated what we do it just needs a little time to get used to it in moments counter press stuff like this it will not take ages it will take time we will see how long but the three new players came in a team which worked pretty well before so there is no rush no need to say that if you don't play tomorrow we have no chance absolutely no chance that is actually good because that they takes the hectic out of things I know you will bring it in anyway but that is something I really like that we can bring them in in the right moment in the right situation and then last uh, then uh, against Lincoln when Diogo Jota goes on I didn't stand there exp and explain you have to stand there or here I wanted him to be as natural as possible and he was I really liked that I saw a lot of the things that he's really good in uh, his behavior between the lines and stuff like this physically really strong it is difficult to get him off the ball he knows where the goal is that is the first thing be yourself and then we start working on a few things and hopefully you can be better than before and that's the key I think to you and Klopp developing young players that you can um, be yourself and express yourself and then you can basically studies how you play in this Liverpool team and then he gives you information to get better and that's how he nurtures and develops players first he observes them and how they play and after that 
he gives them very good advice and also tweaks their playing style just a tiny little bit to be adapted to the whole Liverpool team and tactically Jurgen Klopp of course will give these players instructions how to fit into the team and Liverpool have been linked with a talented Schalke centre-half Ozan Kabak but Schalke started the season in absolutely shocking form first they lost 8-0 to Bayern Munich and Bayern run them absolutely ragged and after that they lost 3-1 Ver against Werder Bremen at home the, the, the only Schalke goal came in the 92nd minute and to make matters worse Kabak didn't endear himself to, to all clubs interested in him basically because after fouling a Werder Bremen player it looked like he spat at him and uh, on the replays it didn't look nice even though Kabak apologized and he said that the camera angle uh, made it seem worse than what it is but still it looks like he's in really bad form and Schalke want quite big money for him so I think for, Li for Liverpool right now it's maybe the best thing to just give the young players some playing time when it is necessary but what if uh, Van Dijk, Matip and Gomez are out injured at the same time? That's I think where we will have problems because I would even play Fabinho and Jordan Henderson together instead of uh, in a big Premier League game I mean in a, in a game against like somebody like Leicester or Wolves um, because what if we put in Billy Kumatio and he has an absolute shocker? Or what if we put in uh, Van den Berg or Netanyahu Phillips and they have a really bad performance uh, and that costs uh, Liverpool ultimately maybe a, a, a three points, we lose that game. It will be very hard to get the momentum back. It's a very difficult balancing act but that's, that's why Jurgen Klopp gets uh, to be paid so handsomely because he will make these hard decisions and he will judge these players better than, than probably anybody else because he, he knows what they are capable of and the good news is we have enough players in the squad that we don't even have to rush these young players in we don't have to put them all in together I mean I don't envy Frank Lampard and Chelsea because they bought so many new players in like five or six new players to put all them together into the same team and expect Chelsea to get results instantly and that's what fans expect after spending uh, spending a quarter of a million quarter of a billion pounds sorry 250 million pounds and as you could see against West Brom Chelsea were this close to losing to a newly promoted side and uh, the the whole team uh, Werner Havertz, uh, you know, Thiago Silva and Chilwell and Hakim Ziyech are yet to come in but even these three new players it gave Chelsea a lot of problems uh, in terms of their, their play was not seamless and they struggled to function as a proper team it would look like a bunch of individuals so Jurgen Klopp doesn't have this problem we have a settled team, I think the most settled team in the Premier League and that's why I said in my Premier League predictions video that Liverpool hopefully in my prediction we'll win the Premier League because we look not just the most settled side but we also with the signing of Thiago and Diogo Jota we look like the strongest squad at the moment we definitely have the best defense in the Premier League and probably the second best attack behind Man City and now we have a midfield that is good enough to rival anybody in the Premier League in terms of the squad, not just the starting eleven. Because the starting eleven, I think that there's no question. Liverpool's starting eleven, when everybody's fit, that's the best in the Premier League. So I'm really looking forward to tonight's game against Arsenal. Actually, I will do a preview on that game later today as well. And now we have another transfer news in terms of outgoings. Union Berlin, who is a very, very uh, nice newly promoted side in the Bundesliga. Last season they were newly promoted. They stayed up, finished in mid-table and they have pretty awesome fans as well. I watched quite a few of their games in the Bundesliga and they are taking Loris Karius on a one-year loan. Liverpool accepted the loan deal. So Karius is booked in for a medical in Berlin so he flies there and he had a couple of years at Besiktas where which wasn't really successful for Karius he didn't really win any major trophies and the Besiktas fans and the Besiktas board 
had some issues with Karius, he was criticized for many blunders and apparently Besiktas failed to pay his wages in the last few months of this contract so it was a pretty messy end to the Besiktas loan move and I wish Loris Karius all the best the news comes from um, Football Insider and also from Gene Sears that Union Merlin uh, move for Karius has been widely reported by these journalists and Karius is uh, definitely not in the plans of Jurgen Klopp or Liverpool so he's free to leave I'm not sure if there is an option or an obligation to buy that wasn't revealed yet but what we know is that Adrian will be the second choice goalkeeper there was also doubt about Alisson being fit for the Arsenal game and Thiago but both have passed a late fitness test and Alisson tweeted out a photo of him screaming and, and the Liverpool Arsenal promo under that picture so hopefully Alisson will be fit for the Arsenal game and Jurgen Klopp also revealed that it makes no sense for Liverpool not to sell some players or not to actually try to offload them even on loan before the transfer deadline day you cannot or sh you should not have a 30 player squad Jurgen Klopp said to Sky Sports that makes no sense we don't have enough games for that the schedule for professional, for professional football players especially if you play for the national team is really on the edge and we try to do what we can by rotation we will see how we can sort it out but you cannot leave a team in the garage and take them out every two or three weeks it's not like an old car in your garage and on a Sunday you take it out there will be difficult situation where you, situations where you miss a player here or there so so we will see how we can deal with that but 30 players for sure is not something we are looking for Ryan Brewster, Harry Wilson and Marco Grich are the three most prominent names that Jurgen Klopp want to sell or at least loan out I think maybe Grich will be loaned out Brewster and Harry Wilson will definitely be sold and also Harry Wilson Burnley did a bid of uh, like 12 million plus 4 million add-ons which Liverpool at the moment are mulling over I would accept it if I'm honest uh, Harry Wilson deserves to play and he will play every week at Burnley and in fact he will become one of Burnley's best players Harry Wilson so I think for his career we shouldn't really keep a player hostage just for uh, the sake of a couple of million pounds and 60 million pounds is a really decent transfer fee for Harry Wilson who had a very good season at Bournemouth but yeah, he's, he's not a top, top player, really, who would get into this Liverpool side. And for him to sit on the bench at 23-24 doesn't may really make any sense for his career. And now that Sheffield United are getting more and more injuries, it looks like that another Liverpool player, former Liverpool player, could be of interest to Sheffield United, which is Daniel Sturridge, who is still a free agent. And the only reason that I can see why Daniel Sturridge hasn't been picked up yet by a Premier League club is his wage demands because he's still only 31 years old, he's a great goal scorer and probably he wants two big wages but now that uh, Sheffield United are having so many injuries defensively and going forward and they still hasn't, haven't scored one goal in the Premier League in three games which is, I'm really sad to see that because Sheffield United was one of my favorite teams last season in the Premier League, they were, they were so so good and I really wish, him, wish them the best, I really wish they either sign, sign, sign Brewster or Sturridge and they just need a pure goal scorer because Sheffield United are a good side, defensively they are pretty solid and they create chances but they lack a true goal scorer and I think Sturridge would bang in at least 10 goals for Sheffield United and that could be the difference between Sheffield staying up or getting relegated to be honest and Daniel Sturridge gave an interview saying that he has unfinished business in the Premier League so he's open to all offers but his preference would be to sign to, for a Premier League club and to show that he still got it in the Premier League and Peter Crouch came out with a fantastic line saying that Thiago looks like he could play the, this game of football 
in his slippers. <laughs> he said, I watched that Thiago cameo at Chelsea last week and you could tell immediately that Thiago had blown people away in his first training session as everybody wanted to give him the ball. Some new signings come in and you know immediately they are a level up. I remember Sharon Shakiri scoring a hat-trick on his first day at Stoke in a five-a-side match when he completed it by lobbing Jack Butland from five yards. The lads looked at each other and said, oh my god, there were some similarities I could see in Thiago with Chubby Alonso. It was the way he gathered the ball, how crisply he passed it. Chubby had, was a wonderful footballer and he came to my mind when I watched Thiago at Stamford Bridge. I know he gave the penalty away, but did you see those no-look passes and how he was rolling the ball under his studs? There was so much to admire in those 45 minutes and he's going to be a big figure through the rest of the season. And I fully agree with Crouch, but I want Thiago to start against Arsenal and to show everybody that he can do against uh, one, of, one of the best teams in Arsenal in the Premier League and also against 11 men because many rival fans said, yeah, it was against 10 men Chelsea, whatever. They weren't really appreciative of Thiago's talent. So I want Thiago to shut everybody up by performing like an absolute beast against Arsenal. And I've been saying this for years that Liverpool, when they sign new players, the squad, the Liverpool squad itself, the Liverpool players it's themselves get excited, they get a lift, they get a push when Liverpool sign a new player and Jordan Henderson in his pre-Arsenal program notes confirmed it by saying being fortunate enough to be a professional footballer doesn't mean your, your reaction to certain things in the game isn't the same as that of a supporter. It's often maybe overlooked that before any of us fell in love with playing we all were football fans, that never leaves you. I was a supporter before I was a player and I will still be a supporter after I finish playing football. So when Liverpool announce a new signing, we are in the dressing room, aren't that much different. We get excited, we get caught up in the anticipation, we look forward to seeing the new signing, hearing them from the, for the first time. It does bring fresh energy and a lift. And as you know, since the start of this season, we have welcomed three new faces to the club. Costas joined first and we got to know him during preseason. Thiago and Diogo are, of course, more recent arrivals, all three are going to be massively important to us and we are buzzing as a team to welcome them in. We need them and we are delighted they chose to come to us. It's never easy joining a new club. Any player who says it is, isn't being honest. And again, like any workplace, being the new person is exciting but also unsettling. For Costa Santiago, they also have to contend with this being a new country as well as a new team. However, I think one of our strengths as a dressing room is that we make this transition as good and as seamless and easy as po it possibly can be. Maybe as a captain I get too much credit for this because the environment we have is cr created by everyone. It is not and never is down to just one person and that's ju not just players either, it's the staff at the club, the coaches, everyone really. What is fantastic about our new arrivals is that they clearly buy into this also. It is evident from their character, their mentality, they are as hungry to achieve uh, their goals as we are. All three players are exciting acquisitions for us and yet all three have shown how keen they were to come and how appreciative they are to be here. I think as a team and as a club we can take pride in the fact we are seen as an environment where ambitious, committed professionals can achieve all they want in the game. Wow, what a perfect thing to say, or perfect things to say for, from Jordan Henderson. And that's the perfect way to end this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.